Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome this morning to uh, Monday morning in the devotions. And uh, I know that today here in Queensland is a public holiday. It's Labor Day, but it's a non-Labor Day. We're celebrating Labor Day, but we're not working today. <laughs> it's a Labor Day long weekend. Uh, so there are a few folks who, uh, who are on holiday and enjoying their time. Uh, Marie, good morning to you. And I uh, hope and pray that uh, everybody had a good Lord's Day yesterday. Tracy, good morning. Um, wherever you're worshipped, whatever you're doing, whether you're on holidays or whether you were just going to church as normal. Caroline, good morning. I uh, like that picture that you put up, I think, from your hotel room. Man, it's beautiful down there on the Gold Coast. We missed you all yesterday. Missed you all yesterday. And... Uh, Looking forward to seeing you when you get back. Barney, good morning. Carol, good morning. <clears throat> and uh, all right, let's get going this morning. Proverbs 27, we're in Proverbs 27. Cameron, good morning to you. Missed you yesterday as well. We know that uh, Rod and Metro were away enjoying the weekend as well. So uh, trust and pray that you've all had a great long weekend holiday. Sorry for those that were wanting live streaming. Uh, found out, Sister Donna told me yesterday, that everybody in the area of Debra was struggling with Telstra. Telstra just didn't come to the party yesterday. So, uh, so apologies for that. It was a cracking message, too. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was useless. Uh, anyway, Proverbs chapter 20. Look at uh, Proverbs 27, verse 20 this morning says this. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Never satisfied. I was reading that the other day. Uh, I was reading that the other day, and that just that thought, never satisfied. Lucy, good morning. Just uh, just got a hold of me. I was saying to our folk yesterday in our service yesterday, I mentioned uh, along this lines that we are living in a generation that really are just wanting more, more, give, 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 you know, you know, receiving, receiving, receiving. And the reason for that is because, Sister Margaret Archer, good morning. The reason for that is because the eyes of man are never satisfied. And because the eyes of man are never satisfied, they're always looking for the next biggest or better deal. They're looking for a they're not satisfied with, with their job, so they're looking for a better paying job. They're looking for a better boss. They're looking for better work colleagues, or they're, they're not satisfied with their, um, with their car, so they're looking for a better car. And I mean, everybody's looking for a better car, right? Sister Nikki, good morning. Uh, you know, not satisfied, uh, you know, with with my wardrobe, so I've got to go out and change all my wardrobe. <laughs> so, but, you know, the list goes on. But it happens in ministry too, you know. It happens in ministry. If we preachers were honest with you, we'd, we'd come to you and we'd say, you know, we're not satisfied with the church growth. And so, therefore, it's like, because I'm not satisfied with church growth, I've got to do whatever. We've got to keep going. I'm not satisfied with, with church attendance, so I've got to do something about that. Or I'm not satisfied with... Uh, with the way ministry is going, so I'm looking for the best and biggest, and what can I do here? Not satisfied with the decor of my office, so I've got to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on the decor of my... Just not satisfied. We live in a very dissatisfied society, and unfortunately, dissatisfaction is creeping in the ranks of Christendom. Now, let me just go forward a few chapters here in Proverbs and uh, Proverbs chapter 30, uh, the writer of Proverbs chapter 30, uh, Agar, he, he says about the generation, there is a generation, there is a generation, there is a generation. And he talks about the generation that curses their father and doesn't bless their mother, the generation that are pure in their own eyes, you know, what have I done? And, uh, you know, not washed from their filthiness as a generation, how lofty are their eyes? You know, they're a very proud generation, generation whose teeth are like swords, they're always saying stuff that's hurtful, you know. Then it says this, verse 15, the horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, 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 give. I want more. I'm not satisfied. And, and Australia is in the grip at the moment of, uh, you know, the political thing about the voice and, and, and just people are not satisfied. With, with doesn't matter what camp you're on. If you're on pro voice, you know, the, that, uh, you know, the Aboriginal community, we're just not satisfied with what we've got here. We want a voice. And then there are those who are saying, no, everything's right and all this sort of stuff. There's just dissatisfaction everywhere. So there's this generation, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, never satisfied. 
Yeah, four things say not, it is enough. Four things, that's enough. I'm full, I've had enough, that's it, I'm satisfied, you know. Then he goes on about the barren womb, he goes on about um, the grave, and he goes on about uh, the, the fire, you know, he says it is not, 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 not satisfied. You know, we often use, perhaps use the illustration about going out for a meal, and sometimes we'll sit down at the table and we, we overeat. We should eat to the point of just being satisfied, but we don't. We tend to indulge. We do live in a generation of indulgence. Now, I'm not saying we, we can't have nice things or anything like that, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but, but, we, but society in general just goes overboard, that next step, indulgence, indulgence, and we see it everywhere. We see it everywhere. That whole thing about indulgence, not satisfied, I want, I want the next best thing, I want the next best gadget, not satisfied with this iPhone, I've got to get the next one, I'm not satisfied with, with this laptop, I've got to get the next one, I'm just not satisfied. And then, uh, you know, we go looking for the next biggest and better thing, you know. Let me give you three quick things we ought to be satisfied with. We ought to be satisfied with the small or the little uh, let me go to Prov uh, Psalm 37 for a moment. Psalm 37. We ought to be satisfied with the small or the little. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting when you think about and read the scriptures. You know, before I read Psalm 37, remember when Jesus fed the 5,000, he fed, fed the 7,000. And uh, he was so interested in the small things that he tells his disciples to go gather the fragments, the little things, the small things. And, of course, when he got those fragments all together, they made up 12 full baskets. So it tells us that Jesus, morning brother Fraser, good morning dear. It tells us that Jesus is, is interested in the little, he's interested in the small things. So Psalm 37 verse 16 says this, let me find it. Psalm 37, 16, a little, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. All right, but if we turn that around, most people are not satisfied with the little that they've got, the small things that they've got, and so they want bigger, they want better, they want the next thing. And he says, a little that are right, a little that you have as a believer. Let me carefully, as a believer, the little that you have is far better than all the riches that the wicked have got. And so, therefore, it, it, we're being instructed: just be satisfied with those small things, be satisfied with the little things. But we're not. We, 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 tend to, we tend to get dissatisfied very quickly and we're, we're looking for other things, bigger, as I said, bigger and better. Uh, let me give you another thing that we ought to be satisfied. We ought to be satisfied with the season that we are in. Be satisfied with the season that we are in. Go with me to Ecclesiastes if you're following in the scriptures. If not, just have a listen. Ecclesiastes, we know these verses so well. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season. Everything has a season. But unfortunately, we're dissatisfied with the season that we're in. And when we're sat, not satisfied with the season that we're in, we're looking to the next season. Now, seasons come, seasons go. Uh, you know, the Bible says in Genesis 8, Genesis 8, 28, I think it says, it says, uh, uh, you know, cold and heat, uh, seed time and harvest, night and day. That as long as the earth remains, all those things are going to continue. That's why climate change is a hoax. God says, as long as the earth remains, all these things are going to continue on, right? But it also tells us seasons come, seasons go. We know that from a, from a literal aspect. We know that from the, from the world, spring, summer, autumn, winter, they come, they go. Sometimes they're a little bit longer, sometimes they're a little bit shorter, right? But they come and they go. Seasons come and go. But the problem is when we get dissatisfied with the season that we're in, we're always looking to the next season. But the problem with that is that because we're not satisfied with the season that we're in, we miss the things of God. See, God's working in the season that you're in now. Oh, but I just don't see it. And because you don't see it, you become dissatisfied with the season that you're in because you're thinking, because you're going by sight, not by faith. 
or you're going by feeling, not by faith. And I was saying this yesterday. Sometimes we go more by our feelings than what we do by faith, or we go by sight. I don't. I just don't see God working, and so therefore I'm not satisfied with the season I'm in. I, I'm I, I'm not being productive enough. I'm not being this. I'm not being. I'm just not satisfied. And I look to the next season. The problem is, is that we miss out what God has for us in the season that we're in now. God has some important things for the season that we're in now. And we'll miss that if we keep looking. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sharing this devotion with you from the point of, hey, I'm there, I've arrived, I've made it. Oh, no, 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 don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Because I can get dissatisfied with the season that I'm in now as much as anybody. Now, we've got to be very careful. Now, even from a, from a preacher's perspective, I want to share a little bit more about that in a moment. We can always tend to look to the next season. Oh, we've got to be, we've got to be visionaries. We've got to have a vision for the future and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, but the problem is, is we look so far into the next season that we place ourselves in the next season and God's not in there yet. He's preparing the next season, but he's not there for us to be working in that season yet. He's in the season that you're in now. What season are you in? Bible talks a lot about seasons. You might be in a season of drought and dryness at the moment, and that's okay. Let God work in that season. Maybe he's creating a hunger and a thirst in your life for something. I'm in a season of abundance. Praise God for that. If you're in a season of abundance, hallelujah for that. We all want to stay in that season of abundance, right? We don't want to go to another season where we're struggling to have that abundance, But we've got to be satisfied with the season that we're in. God is in this season. He's in this season. Don't miss out on what he's doing. Uh, I'm excited for the season that we as a a young church, a a small church, are in at the moment. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about... Uh, who is adding to our congregation? Uh, we had a you know a great spirit yesterday, and, and you know when you hire facilities at the moment, we're hiring facilities, and you're subject to, to times where you can't use that on a Sunday, and and I get annoyed about <laughs> I get annoyed about that because we just get good momentum going, and then it's like oh we can't meet here, we got to meet here, but we had a great time. Went down to Daybro to one of our uh, our uh, couple couple's house, Donna and Kurt, and we we had we had service there. It was great, just a great time of fellowship, just a great spirit. God was there. God, God was there. God, you know, God is in this season, brethren, and we got to be satisfied with the season that we are in. So seasons come, season go. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. And you say, I just don't know what God's doing in this season of mine. Well, why don't you ask him? Why don't you ask him, Lord, I'm struggling to to see what you're doing in this season. I know you've got me in this season for a reason, right? There's a reason for every season. Uh, What are you doing in my life? Show me, Lord, what you're doing in my life and help me to be satisfied with this season season all right let me give you the third thing so we ought to be satisfied with a small we ought to be satisfied with the season we're in and let's go to first corinthians first corinthians chapter three. First corinthians chapter three we ought to be satisfied we ought to be satisfied with the sort of work that we have now when i say the sort of work i'm talking about church okay as I said, I love, I love church. I love church. I, 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 I love ministry. Uh, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful for what the Lord has allowed me to do. First Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is dealing with the church at Corinth, all right? Now, he's saying this. He says, verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, remember last week we looked at Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And that word rock was, was small case R, rock foundation. And the foundation that every church is built upon is, is it's built upon that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, this is what Paul's saying to the church of Corinth. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's the foundation of every New Testament church. Verse 12, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what size it is. (laughs) No, of what sort it is, what sort of work you have. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward 
If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So the loss there is talking about the loss of the reward. But notice, notice where, the, where the, um, the emphasis is, if you please, of what the Apostle Paul is saying. What sort, not what size. Now, we as independent Baptists have been so caught up in the size of the work. We've not been satisfied. Oh, we've got to get out there. And by the way, I believe in soul winning. I believe in winning more souls. I believe, I believe in getting the gospel out there. I believe in all of that. But let me tell you who builds the church. Newsflash, Jesus. And we have fallen into the trap of using soul winning as a church growth method. And if that doesn't work, I'm just not satisfied. Door knocking doesn't work anymore, or this doesn't work anymore. And, and uh, you know, let's uh, let's just do this and let's do that. And, and we get dissatisfied with the size of the work, and we try and we try and implement worldly philosophies to build the church because size is everything. Well, let me tell you something: size is not everything. It's more important that we have the sort of work, the sort of church. That pleases Jesus, and Jesus is not overly—he's uh, not overly uh, uh, wrapped up in the size of a church. Because when you look in the New Testament, there are churches of so many different sizes. But he's looking for a sort. He's looking for a sort of church. Uh, precious stones, as he said back here, he says, you know, uh, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Now, let me tell you. You know, wood, hay, stubble, that's just going to burn up. But he's looking, for a, he's looking for a sort of church that's going to be pleasing to him. And a lot of preachers and people want size instead of sort. And when you want size instead of sort, because you're not satisfied with the sort of work, because you know, it's not big enough, then as I said, you try and do anything un, in your power to, to get size because it's, it talks about a status. I've got to, you know, preachers don't want to say this. You know, I've got a large church and we've got a conference and we've got all this sort of stuff. And wow, look at this. And we get in the big name preachers and also, well, you know, God bless you. But what sort of church do you have? What sort of church do you have? You see, we see everything on the outside, but the sort of church really determines what's behind the uh, curtains. What's behind the curtains, people? You know what I mean? Like we look at a marriage, say, oh, that's just a fantastic marriage on the outside. But what's, what's it like behind the scenes? That's where the rubber meets the road. What sort of marriage? All right. What sort of marriage? Our aim should be the sort of church. All right. Now, is it a Bible preaching church? Now, let me just say this. <laughs> let me just say it. I've had a lot of phone calls over the years, uh, you know, in the churches I've passed. I had people ring me up. Oh, um, we're looking for a church. Uh, what do you have for my children? That's, that's one of the first. What do you have for my children? Uh, church. We've got church. What do you have for my teenagers? Uh, church. Uh, what have you got for young people? Church. What have you got for the seniors? Church. So we've got, we got church. Well, well, why don't you have all these other ministries? Well, we've got church. You know, you can get so caught up with, with, with the size or you get so caught up with having everything out there and all that. Well, what sort of church is it? I think that's more important going by what the scripture is say, saying here than what the size of saying. Am I, am I against the church growing and getting big? No, not at all. But I tell you what, there's some pretty big Mormon churches out there, some big Jehovah Witnesses churches out there. Hillsong's pretty big. You know what I mean? Is big always better? I've seen, listen, I, I've seen God do some pretty big things in small churches. I've seen God do some pretty big things. It's more important that we focus on the sort, not the size. Uh, Bible preaching church, uh, you know, uh, are, are we? Uh, is, is your church the sort of church that's preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is your church the sort of church that loves the people that comes in and fellowships? Oh, it ought to be a, our, our church is a worshipping church. We'll praise the Lord for that. Our church is a soul winning church. We'll praise the Lord for that. It ought to be a balance of everything. Soul winning, worship, uh, fellowship, Bible preaching, all those sorts of things. Let me just say this, if a church never has any other ministries, but Sunday morning we get together, we fellowship, we have a coffee, we have a prayer time, we have some singing, we have preaching, we have more fellowship, and we're exhorted, and we're encouraged, and we're edified, and we go off into the world, and we share Jesus with people, that's a good sort of church. It's a good sort of church. So we ought to focus more on the sort, not so much on the size. Again, God will, listen, God will add, and here, 
check this out. God will add to the sort of church. So if it's a sort of church that he's pleased with, if it's a sort of church that, that's got his seal of approval on it, then he will add to that. And we've got the cart before the horse. Well, we've got to get big, 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 big. Well, grow big too fast and you get, you'll end up with issues. You'll end up with issues. Um, so you're better off looking at what sort of church it is. Does the, does the sort of church you, know, you have, is, is that pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ? And in ministry, and in ministry, pastors, and you know, we've got Brother Fraser, he travels a lot. And, uh, you know, we have pastors that get on here throughout the day and, and they have a listen. And if we're all honest before you, we would often say we're not satisfied with the size. We're, we don't, you know, we're not satisfied with, uh, you know, with our ministries. And we're not satisfied. Well, let's just, let's just put the, the size aside and let's just think about what sort of church do I pastor? What sort of church are my folks coming to? All right? And that's more important than the size. And God will add to the sort. Don't worry about, worry about you getting so caught up with all of this sort of stuff. Just focus on the sort. Be satisfied with the sort, not the size. Be satisfied with the season you're in. Don't always be looking to the next season. Be satisfied with the small, the little things. Better the little that you have than, than the wealth of all the wicked. Amen? So let's, let's, let's not allow the dissatisfaction of the world to creep in and cause us to be dissatisfied with where we're at in our Christianity. All right, let's be a satisfied people and let's just praise God in our life and in our church. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. We thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that we'll take it to heart and we meditate upon it today. May our lives bring you glory and honor in all that we do and say. And I pray, God, that you'll just... Lord, just walk with us. May we walk with you today and please you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Lynn, good morning. Forgot to say good morning to you. Forgive me. Uh, have a great day in the Lord. Look forward to uh, being with you tomorrow morning. So until then, God bless and goodbye for now.